Okay, let's talk about Architect. Uh, one quick thing before we start uh, getting into Architect. Um, if somebody posts a deck uh, to be tuned and it's not in Architect, uh, you can always uh, just go to the link for their deck. Go to uh, Download, Export, Embed Code. And I know it says for Arena, but this, this basically just uh, copies a text version of the deck when you hit copy to clipboard. So hit copy to clipboard, close that out. We'll open up Architect. You'll log in, click on your name, hit new deck. And call this one RBC. And Commander. I'm going to put this in my not assembled folder. I just have a separate folder for decks that I don't actually have built. And we don't want to set this to private because we want to create a link to it uh, so that the pilot can see it. So we create the deck. We hit text import. And paste it. And then it just pastes the deck uh, in text form here. Hit save changes. Takes a second, and boom, we've got the deck. Now, uh, Architect doesn't automatically put the commander in the command zone, so you do have to go and find the commander and just drag it over here to the command zone. And then um, I like to go ahead and save it. That way uh, you, you've got uh, a saved version of the original deck. So um, what I like to do when I first start uh, a tune is I like to uh, separate categories into the main categories that we use for EDH decks like ramp, card draw, removal, and then uh, we can add uh, custom categories based on what kind of deck it is. So, um, so uh, if I were going to tune this deck uh, let's, for instance, they wanted the deck to be faster and we needed to add more ramp. So we would start, uh, we'll change this artifact category to ramp. All right. So now we have a category for ramp. So, uh, right now, uh, what we can do is, uh, the cards that aren't ramp, we can just put them in any any category for now until we uh, create one that they belong in. Um, so also, we're going to be making cuts. Um, uh, for example, we can just we'll cut uh, Kindred Summons just as an example. We'll go down to Categories, create a new category. This isn't going to be in the deck because it's actually going to be the cards that we cut. So we'll call that Cut. And now I've got a category of the cards that we've cut. That way the pilot can see uh, what they actually need to take out of the deck. And then we are going to add cards like and signet. And here, uh, when you search for a card, you can hit all sets and it'll show you all versions of the card if you want to add a specific version. If you're looking for the cheapest version or if you're building your deck and you happen to have a full art one and you want to represent that in your deck, you can just hit uh, you know all sets and it'll uh, show you all of them. Here, we'll just find the cheapest version, which looks like uh, this one right here from Commander Legends. So uh, instead of just hitting the plus symbol to add it to the deck, we want to add it to a specific category. So we're going to hit the uh, arrow here. And in the categories, we will come down to the ramp category that we just created and hit add card. And then we can go ahead and save our changes here. So um, we've got some ramp in here already. So let's just throw everything that's not ramp into the cut category. And then we'll add it back later. Looks like we're going to have a equipment category. Let's 
Okay, all these are ramp cards. So um, since we added an arcane signet, we're going to need to uh, have a category to show the pilot what cards we added. So we're going to go back to arcane signet, find that same one. And then we're also going to add that to a new category that's not in the deck that we call add. So that we can keep track of the cards that we've added. And this will also keep a, a running price of the cards that we added. It's set up just for uh, Card Kingdom right now, but that'll at least give you a ballpark of uh, where you're at uh, in the budget. And it'll also help the pilot see what cards they need to buy or uh, you know add to the deck. So you can see that the Arcane Signet is in the deck in the ramp category, but it's also in the add category down here. And then the deck size is up here. That's a good way to keep track of uh, how many cards you need to add and how many you need to cut and all that stuff. You, know, you always want to make sure it ends up at 100, obviously. And let's see. Um, if you ever want to, if you change all these categories, uh, like we'll just make this one. Let's say uh, card draw. And um, call this one removal. I can't type tonight. And we'll call this one equipment. So obviously we would start throwing all of our equipment here since that seems to kind of be a sub theme of the deck. And usually, uh, you know, you just make whatever categories you think are appropriate. I always start, you know, with the main three, which is ramp removal and uh, card draw. And then a lot of times I'll have a utility category. Take a look at my Damia deck here. We've got uh, 15 pieces of ramp. And, uh, you know, it's debatable. Some some people would say uh, something like a Wayward Sword Tooth that lets you play an additional land each turn isn't actually ramp because you have to have the cards in your hand for it to actually be ramp. But um, you know, I just counted it as the I just counted as ramp in this deck because ramp's kind of a theme, so it kind of fits the theme of the of the deck. And then also in a lot of my decks, I end up running a uh, utility category. It's just for cards that interact with the board or, you know, make the deck more powerful and explosive or something like preordain that smooths out my draws or something that fetches up land. You know, that's not really ramp since it doesn't put land into play, but, you know, this is a card, uh, Nylia's Intervention, that can tutor up land if you need to hit your land drops or it can just kill a bunch of flyers. So, and then something like Leyline of, Antil Ant Leyline of Anticipation, you know, it's just kind of a, it's just a good magic card, you know. Um, and, uh, so, uh, utility is just kind of a catch-all, uh, category that I use a lot of the times, uh, removal, self-explanatory, uh, card draw or card advantage, you know, seasons pass technically isn't card draw, but it is card advantage if you're getting four or five cards back in your hand. Uh, so, you know, it falls into this category. And then um, a lot of times I'll, I'll use like a win con category or, you know, uh, you know, the theme of this deck is dropping bombs. So the win con category is basically called bombs. You know, reshape the earth isn't technically a win con, but, you know, it's just a big swingy bomb spell that can uh, take over the game. And then um, a lot of times I'll have a, a separate category for counter spells. You know, if the deck has a small counter spell package, I'll put them here. Um, if, uh, if the deck only has one or two counter spells, then they can go in the utility category or something like that. It's just a way to be more organized and, you know, see uh, the density of certain spell types and how often you expect to see them in a deck. And um, I think that's about it. If, if you if you've, uh, edited your categories and you've got a lot of custom categories and you ever want to switch back to just regular categories, uh, you can switch this to CMC, and it'll show you, you know, uh, all the different converted mana costs. Uh, you can do it by types. You can see how many creatures, enchantments, instants, and all that stuff. 
Uh, but I like the custom categories. It helps me stay organized and um, make sure the deck's uh, doing what it's supposed to do and make sure it has enough ramp and card draw and all those things. And then uh, over here, you can pull up the stats. And uh, this can help you uh, with the mana base if you're uh, tweaking the mana base, uh, which a lot of decks need. Um, the uh, outer wheel is your mana cost. Uh, so this one's broken pretty evenly between green and blue, and then black is, you know, kind of a third minor color. And then the inner wheel is your production. So, you know, uh, these should, these should kind of, uh, the inner circle should be representative of the outer circle. You don't want to have, um, you know, uh, 20, you know, you don't want to, have 20 blue mana producing sources and then only have like, you know, four blue cards. That's not really, uh, you want to have a good ratio here. So as you can see, uh, our mana production for black is the minor uh, mana production and the green and the blue are the, the, you know, the two even ones. Or they're close to even anyway. And then uh, down here, you've got your card type breakdown. So, you know, if you've got a deck that you're like a creature based deck that you want to have a certain amount of creatures or you know you're basing your deck around enchantments and you want to have a certain amount so that you always draw them uh this is a good way to see uh how your uh card types break down this is a this domia deck is an instant and sorcery deck so obviously it's gonna lean heavy on instants and sorceries and uh, have minimal artifacts creatures and enchantments here's your mana curve uh 3.7 uh is your is my average converted mana cost for this deck which is pretty high but it's a ramp deck, so we would expect that. And then it's got uh, your breakdown by uh, the converted mana cost. So it uh, looks like I've got 15 uh, two drops, and then it breaks them down by color. It's a lot of information here. It's really useful. It uh, helps you uh, tweak and tune and uh, get the deck dialed in how you want it. While I'm tuning, I will I have a, uh, a Google Doc created that I'll use for my notes uh, when I'm tuning the deck. So that way, instead of uh, typing a lot of information into the workshop uh, about the cards that you've cut and the cards that you've added and the changes that you made, uh, I just type them all in a Google Doc as I go. And then that way, when I'm finished, uh, I can just uh, share a link uh, in the workshop to the Google Doc that has all my notes. So if anybody wants to see the notes, if the pilot or another tuner wants to see the notes, uh, they can just uh, follow the link to the Google Doc and they don't have to uh, scroll through a bunch of uh, comments in the workshop. And the workshop stays nice and clean. But um, these prices are usually pretty accurate. Um, I would say it's safe to go ahead and use those for uh, trying to keep a deck on budget. Uh, they might be off by a few dollars or something like that, but it should you know give you a ballpark uh, so you can stay in under budget. And up here, it'll show you the uh, estimated cost for the deck. Um, really surprises me how expensive my decks are sometimes. But uh, then you've got a share button here where you can easily just copy the link. And then um, when we go back into the Discord server, uh, we just post the link in the workshop so that the pilot can easily find the deck. And one more thing, um, if the pilot already has their deck in Archidec, you can just come down here and hit copy deck and uh, it'll create a copy of it for you uh, in your account so you can start editing it. And I believe that's about it. If anybody's got any questions, just let me know in the Discord server. Thanks.